Hello everyone, Chad VK3BL here, and today, due to many requests and a little bit of controversy to thrown into boot, I'm going to explain how you can use a relatively simple device, or relatively cheap I mean to say, the SDR Play. Um, it's a SDR receiver that you connect to your computer via USB. How you can use this device, along with a few other tools, to measure the transmitted performance of your receiver. Now, there's been a bit of criticism saying that this two or 300 or whatever it is in your country device can't possibly match a spectrum analyzer. Now, you go and look at spectrum analyzers and the cheapest ones are say the Regal DS705 or models like that. And believe it or not, they're not actually any better than this. The reason they cost a thousand dollars and this cost $300 is this little box doesn't include the computer. So, without much further ado, I'll go over what you need. Firstly, as aforementioned, you need the computer. This does all the processing. This is the heart and brains and soul of your receiver. Two, you need your device under test. In this case, I'm going to be using the Acer FT817. Uh, sorry, 818. Got them confused. Fancy that. Um, because it only puts out about 5 watts and it means I don't have to have a huge dummy load or a huge power supply sitting here on the table. The second thing you need is a signal source or a sound card that you can connect to your radio that you can play two tones through. Now I use a program called Audacity to generate my two tones and um, it does a great job but you need some way of getting it into the radio. Now radios like the 7300, the 7200, both ICOMs, 7610, they'll have a built-in sound card as do the Acer FTDX 3000. Uh, I'm sure the new 101D will, all those sort of things. So your high-end radios typically have the, the source built in, but for a radio like this, you need a sound source. And in this case, I haven't mucked around with trying to wire in the microphone pins or whatnot, as you can get a bit of um, a bit of a ground loop going between your sound card and your radio if you're not careful. So I had the Yaesu SCU17 on hand, and that's what I'll be using to pipe the two tones um, into the AF section of my radio. The third thing you need is, of course, the SDR Play. Now, any SDR Play is good enough. Um, there's quite a few models now. The entry level is the RSP1A. That's a fantastic unit. It's advertised as having a 14-bit ADC. The truth is they all have a 14-bit ADC. It's just a matter of making sure um, your sample rate isn't too large. If you go up to the 10 mega samples a second sample rate, you, your, um, your ADC won't actually sample at 12, uh, at 14 bits, it'll sample at a lower rate. So for doing this sort of work, you want to use the lowest sample rate, which is about two mega samples a second. Now, some people will get a little bit confused by that and they think, how can you possibly sample seven megahertz um, at two mega samples a second? Um, you know, how does that possibly work? And the way it works is that with spectrum analyzers, they prioritize um, bit rate, so 14 bits, for instance, over sample rate. And they actually, they actually sample or sweep many times to get their, um, to build up their graph. They don't do it all in one shot. Uh, and that's different to an oscilloscope where the Nyquist theorem is absolutely at play. And if, for instance, you want to sample a seven megahertz radio, um, you need to have an oscilloscope capable of 14 megahertz uh, sampling. So. That's the difference. Oscilloscopes, they prioritize um, sample speed or sample rate over bit rate, whereas spectrum analyzers prioritize um, sample or sample depth or sample bit rate um, over um, the actual sampling rate. So oscilloscope might do, you know, um, 100 megahertz at eight bits, whereas a, a spectrum analyzer might only do two megahertz, but at um, 14 bits. That's the difference between two those two bits of test equipment. The oscilloscope is working in the time domain. The spectrum analyzer is working in the frequency domain. So they're, different, they're trying to achieve different things. And um, it can get a bit confusing. People, as I said, people see two megahertz um, or two mega cycles, they call it, sample rate that can't possibly be good enough. Truth of the matter is, that's fine because they over they they don't oversample. It's a, the wrong word, but they sample many times to build up the picture of the frequency domain. 
the, let me count now, one, two, three, four. The fifth thing you need is something to get an attenuated version of the output of your radio. In this case, I'm using a clean RF, variable RF sampler, model RF S2K. Um, it's a reasonably decent unit. It's not, I wouldn't say it's the best on the market, and this is something you can homebrew. Uh, Victor Kilo One Hotel Whiskey, uh, Hawker, has a nice article on his blog on how to build a good um, homebrew sampler, and he provides the bill of materials. So if you're a, if you're a VK, um, Hawker's put up some instructions, he's got pictures, and he's also listed the parts you need and can find at the local electronics store. So that would be a good way of going. These things are from the States. Our dollar's rubbish at the moment. They cost a lot of import. So um, build your own one. I'm lazy, I haven't, but uh, you should. One, two, three, four, five. Really bad at maths. The sixth thing you need, it's a little bit optional, um, is your RF power meter. Now, the reason I say you need it is if you wanna, for instance, um, find out what your radio's performance is like at 100 watts or 5 watts or maximum power, you need a meter that can read to some degree of accuracy um, the output um, into in the, the peak envelope power output. So this meter I've got here is an overkill for a FT818, but it does have a 0 to 30 um, watts range and it can measure peak envelope power, which is what's important when you're doing a two-tone test because it is a two-tone test is a continu is not a um, continual. It's not a single tone, so you don't have your you know single sine wave or constant amplitude. You have one that goes and I hope my silly noises um, add a bit of fun to the video. The last thing you definitely need is a dummy load and a suitably sized dummy load, I might add. This is a little Diamond DL50A. Um, it's rated at 15 watch, watts average power. That's three times what this little 818 can put out. So that will be suitably sized. So anyway, in part two of this video, I'll run through doing the test. I've just explained what's needed. If you're not interested in watching, in learning a bit more about this, don't watch part two of the video as it will be quite long. Um, if you're just interested in doing it yourself and acquiring equipment, I've explained everything you need to know. But I do hope you watch part two of the video um, and uh, I'll love seeing you there. I'll be sitting on the other side of the table. You won't see my face, but you will see all of the test equipment uh, in action. Um, so 73 from Jared VK3BL and rate my radio. Catch you soon.